And if any of any of you guys feel invisible, put a screen put a screenshot of your younger self on your phone, huh. and and say I'm gonna love this kid today, because That's powerful. because it was because the person who was hurt was that little kid that felt invisible, mm-hmm. and it's it's so it was so hard for me to go back and go, yeah, like this kid has value. Hey everyone, my name is Kira Miller. Welcome back to the What's Your Life Journey podcast. Today's guest is my friend Tyler George, who is an entrepreneur and also part of the music group, The George Twins. We can't wait to share his story today. Yeah. So today we are talking with Tyler George. Hey. hey. Um, so we are talking today specifically about how you've really come to find your identity as yeah. of late and that you have really discovered your value and your worth. Um, also kind of within recent times. Yeah. So let, let's let take a, like a backtrack, I guess, and kind of tell me who you were in the beginning of this journey of trying to figure mm. out who you were and figuring out who your value was. Like, who would you say Tyler George was at that point? Yeah. Um, man, I would say, well, growing up, so I have a twin brother. Okay. And a, a lot of, I think, but what I realized how I grew up has a massive effect on who I am and uh, the family in which I was raised, the school in which I went to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I grew up with, with a twin brother in, in a pretty large family. And so my role, uh, I guess the role that I kind of fell into is more of the peacemaker role in my family. Mm-hmm. And so uh, being a twin... And my brother being a little bit more assertive than I was, uh, he got, I wouldn't say he got more of the attention. It was just that I perceived that he had more of the attention. Huh, okay. Um, and I, I guess in a way, yeah, he got more attention because he just asked more for what he needed. Right. I felt like if I asked for what I needed, it would be uh, it, like it would be a burden on other people. Hmm. And so... I kind of fell into this like, oh, just, you know, I'll just keep my feelings to myself because I don't want to intrude on, I don't want to create conflict. Right. And that was the main thing I wanted to avoid. So the, to answer your question, the older version of me was basically trying to avoid conflict at all costs. Mm, okay. And so yeah. you didn't really share much of yourself at that point too? N- no. But I, it was weird because I was really good at like, sharing a fake or what I should be or like what I should be feeling okay. or like I was good at communicating what I should be feeling, but I wasn't actually feeling it. Okay. So it wasn't the feeling that you actually had yeah. at the moment. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's, huh. it, it was more like, man, I should feel sad right now, but I don't feel sad. Huh. But and you could communicate that you should, that but should you be, don't actually feel but sad. I, and that's the worst part. Cause it was yeah. this like, I felt like so my I've loved growing up in my family the way that so my my parents uh, my dad is a pastor of a church mm-hmm. uh, my mom is amazing stay at home mom she's mm-hmm. helped raise all the kids and uh, my dad w- wrote a book when about kind of uh, in the book the meta narrative is my parents' marriage basically falling apart okay and. Uh, It was crazy the vulnerability that they had with us growing up um, because growing up, we saw their struggle. Mm -hmm. It wasn't hidden from us. That's amazing. And they were honest with us about it. And it formed this thing in me like, oh, yeah, like I can I can be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But but uh, well, it showed me how to be vulnerable. I just don't I didn't know if I was there yet. Okay, And it created this kind of hyper emotional awareness in me and my brother and my family mm-hmm. because we grew up, you know, talking about our feelings yep. and analyzing them. Yeah. And, uh, and so that kind of is what brought me into that. Like, Oh, like I, f- I feel like I can describe this well, mm-hmm. but I don't feel it. I'm not feeling interesting. It. So, so you could connect mm-hmm. with people like sort of surface level E because yeah. you, you can know what they were feeling, but you couldn't connect. Like, you couldn't allow yourself to be seen. Yeah. That. Oh, I could totally, huh. like, I could make, 
I could analyze somebody enough to make them feel like a million bucks, mm. meanwhile, not even looking at myself. Interesting. But the, the, the crazy part is in that I would say the old self, older version of me. Yeah. Um, it would, that the struggle was, uh, trying to find, like, I didn't even know I needed to find me. Mm, Like that was, that was the like, oh, I don't, I just don't, I didn't even know me as an individual existed. It was just like trying to move, like trying to orchestrate that there's no conflict. Yeah. So looking back, did you see, can you see now that it affected your life, your life in the different areas? Hmm. And how did that look? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, in everything, I think it's funny because I have this. My brother is like my, he's my, I don't want to say he's like a counter version of me. He's like mm-hmm. the reverse flash of me. Huh. And okay. uh, in, in ways where, so in relation, like emotionally, uh, so growing up, I we, we my brother and I would always like tell people, Jordan was the emotional risk taker, and I was the physical risk taker. Okay. So I would do flips and do that kind yeah. of stuff, but my heart was like heavily, heavily guarded. And huh. so uh, Jordan was like he dove into relationships, mm-hmm. so he had a lot more girlfriends than I yeah. did. I never dated anyone. Uh, I got friend zoned a lot, yeah. But I never dated anyone until I was like seventeen, eighteen. Whoa, okay. And uh, uh, and I'm still dating her now. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. like the uh, it was it was crazy. Like with my brother, he's the opposite of in a lot of ways of my personality. So I can see uh, it was almost like I saw like Jordan had go through heartbreak. And then I was like, I, I don't you want don't that. You don't want that? I don't yeah, want that. I get that. So mm-hmm. I just kind of totally backed away from right. it. And that would, I mean, that's how I, I think that's how I, I saw that shape in me mm-hmm. going, I don't want to, I don't want to feel the pain of heartbreak, mm. but by like trying to avoid it, I actually caused it. Interesting. Because yeah. I just would, I didn't want to risk my heart in anything. Mm-hmm. So nobody wanted to like risk their heart for me because right. I wasn't risking my heart at all. Yeah. So now I realize why I was friend zoned mm-hmm. so so much. Yeah. Be- not only that, I just was like try to be friends with like, girls for like two years, and mm-hmm. they're like, and I pursued them romantically, right. and they loved the feelings of pers- me pursuing them uh-huh. romantically, but then with none of the commitment of a relationship. Huh. So, uh, so now it was, then it was just like, oh man, like I I don't know what to do now. <laughs> like, yeah. I built this amazing friendship. Mm-hmm. And now she doesn't want to ruin the friendship, but her idea of us being friends is me pursuing her romantically. So that's where things got crazy. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's crazy because I think I'm very similar in the sense that I Mm -hmm. always learned by observing other people and and their mistakes, which is kind of a nice way to learn, honestly, because then you don't experience the heartbreak. But then... You also mm. don't jump into things and take risks yes. because you've seen how it's affected other people. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, you are actually the one who ends up getting hurt because you hurt yourself. Yes, totally, yeah, totally. Uh-huh. And, and you think you're protecting, protecting. yourself, yep. but you're literally just like opening up a weak spot. Mm-hmm. It's sort of in in. Uh, it's almost like by holding up the shield, you you like break your arm yeah. because you're holding it up for way too long. Like mm-hmm. you need some time to rest and yeah. show who you are. Um, when was the first time yeah. then that you kind of realized that you were, I mean, kind of, you had a big wall up essentially. Oh, um, <laughs> what was like maybe the awakening Hmm. or was it more of a series of things that you know, happened? I would say it's probably a series of things mm-hmm. because I feel like there's moments, yes, you know, absolutely. um, and I feel like I'm still awakening to yeah. it, but, um, I would say, Man, uh, you know, uh, my relationship with Jacqueline has been really good because for the first time, like, I felt like somebody saw me hmm. apart from my brother. Yeah. And uh, and also Jacqueline was the, the reason, like, I had a reason to not be with my brother as often. Because mm. I, I was with my twin brother for, we would spend all day together, yeah. every day. Yeah. And it was awesome. Mm-hmm. And we could do it. And it was right. like, uh, 
and it was there was a comfort there. Mm-hmm. And now when I started dating Jacqueline, that time started being allocated to a different place. So I actually started to find my identity apart from Jordan. Yeah. And so then I realized like relationship will expose a lot. And that's why I totally get like when people are like, marriage is hard. Mm -hmm. Like it's because you're constantly being exposed. Yep. And you can't like you can't hide or Mm -hmm. else it just destroys your you internally. Yeah. And so I think the realization of that wall existing was, or the, I guess my awareness of it was when I started dating Jacqueline. Mm. Uh, so it was another person coming Yeah, to because her. she was the, she was like, oh, like, oh, someone sees me and someone like loves me. Yep. And uh, I remember having a phone call with her, um, like just like sitting in my car and I was like, uh, we, we just were in, you know, we were talking about like uh, risk. Mm-hmm. Like she was like, man, I, I just don't want to, I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to share everything with you because I don't, I don't know if it's going to be safe. You mm-hmm. know, I'm like, yeah, like that. And that's a risk. You yeah. Know? Oh, absolutely. And I get that. And I was like, like, she was like, I just, I just don't feel like I want to share this until we're engaged. And mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know if. I was like, I like, I need you to risk your heart mm, yep. for me, and I realized like I needed to risk my heart for her too. Yep, absolutely. And in that moment, it was the first time where she was like, you know what? Yeah, like I will. Here's all of mm-hmm. like the stuff I've gone through. What I'm like, and and then I got it. I got the honor of holding the weight that she had been carrying for so mm, long. Yep. And by by kind of receiving that honor, it exposed a lot in me of like, oh, like that's this is like I actually haven't like I haven't given me my heart yep yet, and so I was really like I was so I was so consumed with trying to get her heart Mm -hmm. that I didn't want like once I had it it was like oh well well now I have. I have to give this to you. Yeah. So like I got my goal. Like mm-hmm. I have, you know, I feel like I, I'm I have her heart. Right. Now I have to go, here's mine. Mm-hmm. And so that was the I would feel like that maybe it was the starting point for me, like realizing that the wall exists. Huh. Was that a lot scarier for you then to share <laughs> yourself than to take on her oh, burdens? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. One hundred percent. Yeah. It's uh it's so easy. It's kinda like when you uh, you can recognize flaws in other people more than you can yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that is, and again, I feel like I, I wasn't even able to share my heart because I didn't know who I was. Mm, yep. Huh. Yeah. So you didn't even know what to share. Uh, yeah. Like, like when you say, oh, you tell me, like, it's been cool even be, being a part of this podcast because mm-hmm. it's the process of yeah. me. Ex, like extrapolating and, and yeah. communicating. Talking about it. This yeah. is me apart from the George twins, which is my band, mm-hmm. apart from my twin brother, yep. apart from like my family. Yep. And so uh, that like I'm in process and still discovering who I am. Yeah. But I feel like I have a better framework mm-hmm. for saying, oh, yeah, like this is what I like and this right. is what I don't. So uh, just feeling safe enough to share my heart yeah was something that was really valuable for me how have you seen that shift with um the george twins oh, then, yeah. as the band it's it's so i literally had a conversation with my brother yesterday about this Interesting. and um so he just got back from like traveling to uh, paris and london and haiti these amazing trips mm-hmm. and uh, it was so cool because we talked about what he talked about what i talked about confirmed like was like in sync with each other. So the George twins for a while has been like Jordan's child. Yep. Like Mm -hmm. he was the driver. He was, and uh, truthfully, he needed a, he needed a, a different outlet and, and going like the George twins for it to exist and for it to be the best version of itself. It has to be Tyler and Jordan collaborating equally. Yeah, absolutely. And, it was easier for me not to like worry about it. Mm-hmm. Like I could, it, he, he like, 
he over functioned in it, and I was like, sure, you yeah, can take it. So right. I was I was lazy in it, mm-hmm. and and he like so my work was trying to take is taking more ownership in the George gotcha. Fund, and his is taking less. Huh. And so um, the more that I started finding myself, I could act, I could believe that I actually had something of value to offer the mm-hmm. George twins. Yeah. Um, and part of that is is going. I've had a song that everyone said like. You need to record this. Why well, haven't recorded it yet? Mm-hmm. I just have been like, oh, it's, you know, it's whatever. Like, yeah. we can do this other song or whatever. Right. And uh, now we're, I think we're going to record so it. So now you're pushing for mm-hmm. it. So now, huh. we're, so that's that's kind of the next step. And yeah, where how that you know how that shift is as shown in the George Twins. Yeah. Yeah. So are you becoming like more of a songwriter now then? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I'm healthy, mm-hmm. like in a really healthy place, yeah. I write. Huh. Um, okay. And. Uh, it's been, so I write and create like, uh, so I write and I create connections. So like there are people that come to my mind Mm -hmm. that I just call and I'm like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And even, um, uh, from a business standpoint, I'm just on top of things and, and I'm just sharp. Um, the, I, I guess for, um, yeah, I guess when we, like as that the way that sh- that shift has played out with with Jordan and I, it's been it's been really cool to see how like my individual self has like emerged from mm-hmm. all of this work. Yeah. Um, but it's it's also been scary because I'm like, what if people don't like my song? Absolutely. Or like, now they can actually attack me. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're going yeah. back to that like shield analogy, yeah. it's like. Okay, the shield's down. Mm-hmm. I'm like attacking, so I could totally be, you know, countered and then yep. taken out. But I feel like you're probably in a better place now to be yeah. attacked because if you are, like, it sounds like you at least know who you are, and mm-hmm. at the end of the day, could come back with a comment and yeah. be like, "Well, I know that's not true. I know I know that's not who I am. Totally. So I'm just gonna hear it, but throw it out immediately." Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean that's a hundred percent like. Now that I feel like I'm starting to know myself, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Like, I've been the biggest advocate of value you. Mm-hmm. And I'm realizing it, like, in the, like, all, a lot of people come to me for advice sometimes yep. just because I'm real. I'm pretty good at, at seeing things from all sides. Yeah. And again, like, now I'm, like, working on seeing things from my side. Right. And, uh, and now it's, like, every part of my life has been enhanced because I know myself mm, yep. and because I believe I have value. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched the Mr. Rogers documentary recently. Yeah. Uh, it, like, if you haven't seen it, if you guys haven't seen it, you have to go watch it because right. it's I amazing. I still have to, yeah. And, um, and it's all about valuing you for who you are, like not what you do. Mm-hmm. You are, you're, you're fine just the way you are. Mm. And it's and it's so it, it was so powerful for me in the season that I'm in right now, mm-hmm. um, and and he was he was saying how important it is for a child to hear that, mm. um, and and I go wow like part of the work for me, um, and I guess to answer another one of your questions previously, one of those other moments for me was when I broke up with Jacqueline. Interesting. Um, Because we broke up for a short season, and I because I just was numb, Mm -hmm. and I didn't know. Like again, I was like, talk about that. Yeah, I I didn't know myself. Like, yeah, I. And so I started going to counseling, Mm -hmm. and uh, hardest, hardest season of my life. Like one hundred percent. Just like, you know, uh, like dark, Mm -hmm. and and it being like. I wrote in my journal, uh, depression, question mark. Really? Like, I didn't know. Well, and that's what you're saying. You felt, you really felt nothing and you didn't know how to describe it. Mm -hmm. I remember you saying that. Yeah. And so it was just like, I should, am I depressed? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and it was just this really dark season for me. When I started going to counseling, um, and I actually went to the counselor that my mom and dad went to. And it was really cool because... He's had a very similar story than yeah. I did, huh. and uh, just a feeling invisible, mm. um, and that so he, we connect in such a deep way. Um, he recommended that I just on the screensaver on my phone uh, 
And if any of any of you guys feel invisible, put a screen put a screenshot of your younger self on your phone. Huh. And cool. and say I'm gonna love this kid today, because That's powerful. because it was because the person who was hurt was that little kid that felt invisible, mm-hmm. and it's it's so it was so hard for me to go back and go, yeah, like this kid has value, and it's mm-hmm. weird just like seeing the younger version of yourself because it's 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 um it, there's like this weird like. Well, that's me, but it's not me. You can experience like your pain all over again, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and going like, that kid is loved. Mm-hmm. And and so I started diving into like what it looks like to love the younger version of me that felt invisible. Hmm. And as I started to like, th- here's what it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, fear had locked all of my emotions and and, and it felt like th- there's like a lockbox and I and through it, I couldn't find the key. Like hmm. the, all the other emotions that I felt, and like joy, sadness, like, like everything, yeah, felt like it was locked away, mm-hmm. and the, I couldn't find the key. The key was fear. Huh. Okay. And, and so fear kept me from feeling all other emotions mm-hmm. uh, because I was afraid to expose myself. Yep. And b- by going. I have value and I can't like it. People are going to love me Mm -hmm. um, in valuing myself because I step one is I got to value me. Absolutely. Yeah. If I, if I find value in me, yeah, I can share it Mm -hmm. because, but if I don't have value, I'm not going to share it. Right. Um, And I think that's the, the way my personality plays out of going, some people believe I don't have value. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do these other things that fill this for me. Yeah. Or like I'm going to share it and it's going to be really unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Like me sharing my lack of like because I don't believe in myself, I act out on these different ways. Yep. I don't act out. I just internalize. Interesting. So So you act in kind of mm -hmm. instead. Huh. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was just I just internalized and then. Uh, I mean, it would come out different ways, but mm-hmm. I just would internalize like crazy. And uh, and so once I believed I had value, mm-hmm. it was that was the moment. And then I just, I like was like getting stuff done. Fire. I oh, yeah. Like, it literally felt like it was like born again, basically. Huh. And because uh, that's when I went back to Jacqueline. And I was mm, like, okay. listen, like I've found, it's like I found myself again. Yeah. And I want you. Mm-hmm. And and it was the first like she's <laughs> cuz I had when we broke up it was like it wasn't a good breakup. Mm-hmm. And and you know I like I was totally expecting her to like just be like screw that guy like Interesting. Like and and she's not that way. Right. But um <laughs> but uh, when when we got back together I was like this is me. I I've realized that I love you, mm-hmm. and and I I'm not expecting anything in return. Mm, that's incredible. And so I think it's because you ended up finally loving yourself, so you don't have to yeah, expect anything in return. Totally, huh? So looking back at yourself as a child is really what kind of like I, I think yeah. it sounds like you almost forgave yourself for who you were back then and like throughout your entire yeah. years until that's so this good. place. Yeah. Mm, that, yeah, that's so powerful. It, it's, it's, it's giving yourself permission to like, be like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, you're like the way that you grew up and the, the things that you experienced, like um, you're not defined by those things. Mm-hmm. And I realized uh, I call them ego stories, but there are things that were spoken over me mm-hmm. that, it, uh, whether it be the bullying that happened when I was younger or like all these things that I just took mm-hmm. and was like, that's just, that's me. That's that's an, the but it's an ego head. story. It's not really just huh. you. Yeah. It's just an ego story that people have told you. And so people start believing those ego stories mm-hmm. and and they're not the truth about you. Yeah. And, um, and that for me was like, just kind of 
like pull, looking at those ego stories and like, is that truth? No, mm-hmm. Just throw it out. Mm-hmm. Like, do I have value? Like, there was another thing like, um, you know, Jordan is the physical, like I'm not the emotional risk taker. Yep. Was that like Jordan's the, I'm, Jordan's the emotional, I'm the physical. Right. It's not that. It's just that we exist on a spectrum of I tend to lean this way more, yeah. more than he did mm-hmm. in that season. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like I'm just going, yeah, like I am a human being mm-hmm. and I exist on this different spectrum of uh, love and fear. Yep. And sometimes I'm more in fear than I am in love. Mm-hmm. And my goal is trying to tip that spectrum more towards love mm-hmm. every single day. Mm. And um, and it starts with loving myself. Yep. So. so are there ever times now, maybe more recently, where you at least hear those voices start coming back up? Like what kind 100%. of triggers them? Whew. Um, and how do you continue to overcome uh, and win the <laughs> battle, really? Uh what triggers them is probably sleeping in. Interesting. And, and, and I have this idea, and I actually wrote this on my phone. I have this idea. I don't know how it's going to come out, but I, well, I don't know if I'm going to write a book on it. But, <laughs> um, uh, but the idea is sleep shame. Hmm. So, so I think for some of us, we have sleep shame. If we sleep in... Or if we hit the snooze button one time or 20 times, it creates this um, shame that you can't do what you promised yourself Ooh, earlier that. in the morning you could, or yeah. earlier that night mm-hmm. you could do. And so I, so every time, like year, I've had years of this. So it's almost become just a pattern of like just waking up in shame, mm. Beca- going, I can't even fulfill the small promise that I made last yeah. night. So how the heck can I? Can't even wake up 30 minutes earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, that's really so, cool. So uh, s- sleep has been the maybe one of the hardest struggles of my life. Hmm. I love sleep. Yeah. It's the greatest thing on the planet. <laughs> it really I is. I love it. Yeah. Um, it's my inner sanctum mm. where I can think about things because my brain is constantly yep. going. Mm-hmm. That's why I take ridiculously long showers. Huh. And... Uh, like I stay in my car. Yeah. And same. And it's just like I can think and think and think and think mm-hmm. and think. Yep. And and just be like I love it. I love just like um but yeah, like I said, I love sleep, but it's the thing that like I wake up in this that's the trigger to I don't even have value. Mm. Because I can't even I can't even produce this much. Yep. Cause I think I think for most men and for women as well, it's it's we value our our value comes in our production. Yeah, absolutely. and and I, I'm I'm seeing that actually more with women now too. Um, whereas when it growing up, it was like more like image based stuff, yep. mm-hmm. and um, and now I'm like <laughs> I'm like what, what you struggle with productivity too? I'm yeah. like what the heck? Like and and part of the uh, you know, as, as a side note, part of the reason why my brother and I did music was seeing all of our uh, friends that were girls go, I don't believe I have value. Hmm. And, yep. go, and going, I'm like, what the heck? You're gorgeous. Yeah, right. And you believe that you're not attractive. Now right. it's the, now the ego story that they're telling is, I've got to be just like, I've got to be just like my dad. Yep. I've got to be like because a man. I've mm-hmm. got to be better than my dad mm-hmm. because I was hurt by my dad. Yeah, that's and, so true. And so then their value is insecurity. Mm. And so, I, I at least in my the I, I guess my sphere of I don't want to say influence, but like uh, where I'm living at now, what I'm seeing is, is a lot of girls go from I mean, girls also struggle with image. Yeah, but I'm seeing this like also like. Stability is the main thing. Mm. Like you know, like gotta be the strong, independent woman. Yep. And and I'm like, I want to provide for I, ourselves. Yeah, I'm all yeah. for it too. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, there's also this like, but like what? Like uh, there's this their ego story is I've got to be secure to yeah. be loved. Mm. And uh, and if I'm not secure, I can't be loved. Mm-hmm. As opposed to like I'm not beautiful, so yeah. I can't be loved. Mm. Um, and I think that also exists on a spectrum mm-hmm. of going uh, back and forth between like 
security and and beauty. Yep. And for guys, I think it's it leans more on the spectrum of uh, security. Absolutely. But that was the main. That's the main kind of ego story that I was telling myself of like I just can't wake up in the morning, and huh. I can't like I just, that's what triggers it. Yeah. So what are the maybe mental or spiritual practices that you mm. find yourself doing on a regular <laughs> basis that really yeah. kind of like help you overcome these these voices? That well, you're aside from not sleeping in. Yeah, I mean, because mm-hmm. I, I would say like probably going to bed earlier was the probably the yep. greatest thing that um, that that eliminates that mm-hmm. um, because what it does is allow space for those other spiritual practices yeah. like um, just making sure that um, like waking up in the morning and reading um, uh, with my work we have, we have a we have like a, a group me but okay. there, there's a um, thing called miracle morning and it's you wake up early and you go through this like analogy called savers um, and it's basically just like silence, affirmations, so speaking life over yourself. Mm, yep. Uh, visualization, so you visualize mm-hmm. where you're going to be. Yep. Create your own future. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, gratitude probably with that. Gratitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, amazing book by Joe Dispenza called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, which was also one of the Ooh, huge yeah. one of the huge books that helped me get through this like loving myself I'm gonna thing. I'm going to have to write that one down. Um, yeah. yeah I, can, I can show you all the stuff on it. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, that that's the power of visualization, creating a new future and not living in your past. Mm. Um, uh, and then there's like uh, exercise. Yep. And the last one, R. What is R? I don't remember. You can totally it Google it if you yeah. want to. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Just look up Miracle Morning or Savers. You'll you'll find it's okay. really good though. Um, so those are kind of the things that I that I, I usually what I do is mm-hmm. is more just like uh, exercise. Um, oh, reading. That's what it was. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Which you do a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. So I, my reading is either audiobooks, podcasts, mm-hmm. um, uh, actual reading, or YouTube videos. Mm. I like. I, I love that you consider all of that reading because yeah. it's all the same. It's all retaining information. Yeah. It just depends on how, what medium in which you mm-hmm. are like most efficiently retaining. Right. Um, I tend to retain well, like YouTube videos, pretty well. Same. Um, and so if there's a visual component too, mm-hmm. I love it because I can, it keeps me focused. Yeah. Um, I can't, I can, like if I'm driving, I can listen to a podcast. Mm-hmm. I cannot listen to a podcast if I'm like sitting down and just huh. like, like I can't do that. Yeah. Like, so you have to be doing something. I also like have that. ADHD. So that, there you that go. was, that's another like, uh, uh, side thing because mm-hmm. I was diagnosed like two years ago and then I realized like why I was always growing up asking why I thought different than everybody else yeah and it was because I literally was thinking different than everyone is else is that an ADHD thing well what happens is I, I grew up going why don't people get what I'm saying I'm like why don't people understand me mm. that was the thing that I said okay. growing up yeah and it was because the way that I like I would just be so I couldn't focus, I couldn't do it. Interesting. And um, and my brother wasn't that way. He doesn't have ADHD. Mm-hmm. And so and most of the people I saw are like very like, they can go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing mm-hmm. to the next thing. Uh, the one thing that I felt like, because uh, I started taking medicine for ADHD, and it was like like wearing glasses for the first time. Huh. It was like. This is everybody else. Th- like, you can actually transition from one thing to the next thing without losing your mind. Like, because huh. for yeah. me, it was More it was just the focus. space between transition that was okay. so hard. Yeah. So I would do one task, and then it would take me 20, 30 minutes to remember and figure out what I was going to do. Like, I walk into one room and forget what I was doing in the other room mm-hmm. and go, crap. Because you have such an intense focus on the thing you're doing. So, like, why I forgot the R on, yeah. the, on the savers. Huh. Because it's like, oh, crap, what is it? Like, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, like, I, I'm not like, I kind of went on this like, I don't need medication. Right. I can do it. Mm-hmm. And then, like, it slowly got worse. Mm. And then I was like, I, do, like, I don't want to be relying on this, but I want to use this as a tool. Yeah. To be the best version of myself. Mm. So, um, uh, 
like if I need to get a lot done in that day, I'll take medicine. Okay. But yeah. I usually I'm not because I'm I like <laughs> natural. Yeah, yeah. I guess and and again it's like Jacqueline can tell the most when I'm on my medicine or yeah. I'm not on my medicine. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But sometimes when I value myself, I just come off like a little bit rude, and it's huh. and it's and it's good for me. Yeah. Like it's like it's like you have boundaries and stuff. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly mm. what it is. It's literally putting boundaries. Yeah. Because and that's fine. Mm. We're supposed to do that. Which is, for me has been hard. Same. Like that's the mm-hmm. that's the struggle, you know, like because you don't want to be. Yeah. You never want to be seen as selfish, but you have to be sometimes. Yes. Because you can't, you can never give of yourself if you don't have stuff to give. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, this is so cliche, but this, the phrase that always like just runs in my mind when I think about this is that whole thing on the airplane where like put your Mm. oxygen mask on before you put on your child's. Cause it's like, well, you can't help them if you're not breathing. Same in any situation. 100%. Yeah. Like the, the, Yeah, I I struggle with with boundaries is the hardest thing. Mm. But even having the space to put up boundaries. Huh. Space and value. Yeah. Like I have to value myself and have enough space to really think about why I'm setting the boundary. Okay. Um those are like the two components because if if I'm rushed, then I'm just going to defer my preference. Yeah. If I don't believe I have value, then people are just going to run over me. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. Um boundaries have always been hard. Uh, have been hard. Mm-hmm. I like I, I sometimes I like now. speaking speaking in a future, creating a future. Mm, I love versus that. Versus a yep. Like I'll, some of my friends, and they kind of get annoyed when I do this sometimes. But they'll be like, "Yeah, I just I can't I can't like you know I could uh, I c- I could never do that." I'd be like, "Yet, yeah." So it's I, true because here's the thing: we're all in the process of growing, and there's nothing we can't do. Mm-hmm. But it's just believing that you have the value yep. of going like, like man, like I can never find a relationship mm. yet. Right. And it, it because right the now, mo- but in the, the more that you continually to solidify those ego stories or those mm-hmm. things lies you tell yourself, they come true. That's what you're going to live into. Mm-hmm. And so if you actually start speaking in a way that gives you gives yourself hope and value, mm-hmm. um, then you actually start to believe it. Yeah. So. Hmm, so it sounds like you're really in a much better place now. Way better place. Yeah. Um, still, like, continue, like, struggling with the sleep shame thing mm-hmm. and, and working on creating better habits. Like, that mm-hmm. is the new season. Like, the new season I'm in is just, like, building habits that are going to serve me in the future. Yeah. Um, and none, I don't think any uh, – another thing was that was really helpful in creating that new self for me okay. was – becoming an entrepreneur like mm. working on like working in finance yep because <laughs> my income is direct correlation with my own personal development yep absolutely and so i just was broke and broken mm-hmm. and that was the thing that mm. that propelled me into yeah that season with breaking up with Jacqueline and all yeah. those different things so it was it was a Tough season, but God so used it mm. in an amazing and way. And is continuing to use it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So who would you say Tyler George is right now? Right now. Hmm. Tyler George is a guy who is human mm. and he's figuring it out. Love that. And uh and and refining his identity. Um uh, I would say, in in really the identity that God God's placed within mm-hmm. me, because that's ultimately I had to come to a place of, do I have worth r- regardless of, um, regardless of what anyone says. The only way I can get to that place if is if I believe a higher power yep. has implanted that value inside mm-hmm. of me. Absolutely. And so uh, I find that value through the character of Jesus, and so people have used other avenues to find value. But that for me is the one that I land on and go, this is why I have value. Mm. And if it weren't for that, I, I'd, that's, uh, I wouldn't have, like I, all of the other stuff would just be fabricated, yep. like value. Yeah. Or I absolutely. just find it in my production or how many podcasts I'm doing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Okay. So two final questions. Yeah. Um, 
the one is just like what has been like maybe a Bible verse mm. or an inspirational quote, a book, someone's life story yeah. that has just kind of defined everything about your biggest journey, which yeah. is finding your worth and your identity. Mm. Like what has resonated with you the most, I'd say? Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself mm. by Joe Dispenza. Okay. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. If you guys have not, uh, if you guys uh, check out this book, there is a it's an there's an audio version of it too. It's it's a lot to go through. Like it's it's a and it's and it's tough to get through mm-hmm. some, at some points. Um, or if you just look up Joe Dispenza, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself on YouTube, he has some lectures that are phenomenal. Oh, okay. So if you just look up on YouTube, Joe Dispenza, like you'll be able to find um, uh, lectures that give a good overview for what the book is. Mm-hmm. And then if you really are compelled by that, go get the book. And yeah. Because it's it's basically... A bite-sized piece of meat. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so that that would be, I would say, like a practical thing that mm-hmm. the listeners could go do. Yeah. And then um, I, if you're in a stuck place, if you feel stuck, if you feel broken, get help. Like mm. go see counseling. Like... Do whatever you can, like save the money that you would spend on Starbucks and go to a counselor. Um, there's there's some uh, there's a place called the Refuge Center here um, uh, that do like income based stuff where it's wherever your income is, they'll like mm. match you. Um, there's different places that have income, but like wherever you are, get help mm. and 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 speak out about it. Because the more that you internalize, the more you will go deeper into that chain. Mm. Um, Shame is power in yes. silence. Can't say that enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, I would just say talk to someone. Mm. Don't internalize. Um, professional help is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's different. Like some people are like, yeah, I just, I'll just talk with my friend Susie. Or like, mm-hmm. like your friend Susie's not going to be enough to guide yeah. you. And she has really an emotional deep. connection to you, which the professional totally. help does not. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and it's not that your friend Susie can't help. Right. But it's, but it's, it's about valuing yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's one of those things of going, uh, for me, the step was counseling mm. and, yep. and, Same. and finding professional help. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because there just comes a point where you can't do it right. on your own. And there's a breaking point. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd say there's some amazing books, uh, but a lot of the times for me, filling my head with knowledge is not the way to find my own value. Mm. And so a lot, if, if anybody out there is like me, you're just going to try and find another formula, find another thing that you can yep. do to get better. You need a relationship and you need it to, to build something um, uh, it, for me, it starts with the higher power. So for me, uh, it's it's Jesus. That's where mm-hmm. it, it lands. I I had to go back to that. Mm. Um, but the the way I could find that was through the avenue of counseling. Mm. So um, that would be what I would say is the best, most practical. Yeah. If you feel stuck, if you are hurting right now, get help and don't internalize it. Mm. Trust me. Yep. From the guy that's held the, the ball underneath the water for a long time, mm-hmm. it's it will explode. Yeah. And so uh it's 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 scary, but it's so good once you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So the last question is just where yeah. can people find you on social media? Yeah. Um uh Tyler Graham George is uh, I actually changed my Instagram name. You did? Yeah, from Tyler George 81 to Tyler Graham George, just as an identity thing too. Rebrand. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so if you just check out Tyler, Tyler Graham George on Instagram, uh, the band is called the George Twins. Mm-hmm. So you just look on YouTube or, or yeah. Spotify um, uh, or any of the music platforms, Apple Music, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like... Uh, Honestly, if, if you guys have, if any of you guys have struggled or questions for me, feel free to DM me or, um, uh, uh, yeah, shoot me, shoot me a, uh, yeah, a DM or, or anything on Twitter too. I think Twitter is different. Uh, Twitter is, uh, 
Tyler, I think it's Tyler George 81 on Twitter. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find me. And I love having these kind of conversations mm-hmm. and being able to direct people in the right avenues. Mm-hmm. So if anybody wants to do that, you can, yeah. uh, but yeah, that's, that's me. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you, Tyler. Like yeah. this has been incredible because like I, I just met yeah. you and to know already your life story yeah. has been really cool. And I, I think I can relate a lot to not wanting to be seen for the longest time. Mm. And also just like, but also I wanted to help people so much, but I can't really help people that much if I'm not seeing myself. Mm. And so I think it's just been incredible to hear you talk about that. And yeah. especially as someone who is like very theologically sound and mm. I think you just have so I much try to, to offer. Yeah. Like, but yeah. you, you know, you research and... I research a lot. Yeah, yeah I do. And I don't, yeah. so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I hate it. Yeah. I love it. I like... It's man. people think I nerd out, man. It's <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. yeah, but no, seriously, thank you so much yeah. for sharing. Thanks for having today. me. Absolutely. I love this, and and uh, uh, I'm starting a podcast soon. Yeah, and part of it Can't is freaking wait. Uh, part of this conversation is going. Yes, I just love learning mm-hmm. how the process works, and yeah. and. Um, and can't wait to continue to share more. Mm-hmm. You should have somebody interview you. I will at some point. Yeah. <laughs> tell because, my own story. <laughs> because that's going to be powerful. I know. Because uh, I, I think it's going to be really cool because if you if your journey has been anything like mine, mm-hmm. it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be interesting when you're in the hot seat. It is. Yeah. Well, it's interesting too cuz like I've told my core group of friends mm-hmm. my entire life story, but like It's one of those things that I actually can share with anybody. I don't think I'm ready to share on a public platform, but this thing is absolutely building me up to that place. So yeah, Mm -hmm. what a better way to like right (laughs) learn how to share yourself to the world. So true. Than like Mm -hmm. sitting with people, watching them do it. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you so much again. We love having having you. Thank you all so much for listening to the What's Your Life Journey podcast today with Tyler George. Hey, hey. If you want more content like this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which the link for that will be in the description. And yep, make sure you check out Kira's Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash what is your life journey. It's so, actually what's your life journey, uh, not what is. Sorry, <laughs> because grammar is hard sometimes, it but is. guess what? She has an amazing Patreon family. And if you want to see more exclusive content, make Join sure you check community. out the page. Thank you. We appreciate you. See ya. See ya. <laughs>